But as an adult, I think I've noticed more some of these differences and, and um, I never really had a direct experience as, a, as growing up in high school or in university where I felt that I was being um, discriminated or attacked in any specific way. They were just, you know, you hear the racial slurs, you hear the whatever, see them and that, and you just kind of shrug away from it and you just stayed away from those kinds of things. Um, but as an adult, um, I think I ex was more noticeable at the subtle changes, the way people, um, whether it was advancements in, um, in your work or opportunities that were given to you or not given to you. Um, even when our children were born and as they pursued their interests, um, we felt there were lots of times where you can't directly say it was discrimination, but we feel quite strongly there are some things that definitely did not happen because either myself, my husband, or our children were discriminated against simply because of our race, which is unfortunate because everybody's lives is determined by one decision or another. and. Um, opportunities were missed, I think. Um, I wouldn't say that I got, I wasn't supported per se. I do know that in, when I think back on um, my coursework and my university work, um, there weren't a lot of Asians out there mm -hmm. in, the, in the pool of people that I took my um, admin um, courses with in my master's thing. Well, even in the teaching field, I don't think there was a lot of Asians in the the teaching market. Like, I, it's not as diverse that is, as it is now. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I didn't ever feel that. I do feel, though, that my opportunities, once I finished my degree and was now seeking to get my first admin position, um, I think there were some things where I was overlooked or not given the opportunity because I was really I had two strikes against me. I was Asian and I was female. So those were, I think, factors that were there. They're not tangible and you know, you might be hard pressed to actually prove any of that, but I certainly felt it and um, you know, missed opportunities and I know that um, in the relatively small district I was in, it became more apparent that it would be hard to pursue my role in admin if I stayed in that district. Um, hence my move to a much larger district that was almost three times the size of, uh, you know, I was in Maple Ridge and moved to Surrey to the largest, you know, Maple Ridge, one of the smaller districts in the province at the time to one of the largest districts in the province. So um, I was given much more opportunity in Surrey to pursue my, my uh, um, administration career. And, but again, even within that, I don't think I was 100% fitting in. It was almost, and this is where I think the whole issue about race and racial discrimination and separating people per se into categories comes into play where we're doing, I think, I think we've done a good job to this point as a culture and a society to acknowledge that there are differences in people and there certainly is a lot of talk and I wouldn't say it, in some ways, lip service paid to acknowledge that these different people, whether they are Asian, First Nations, Southeast Asian, doesn't matter what it is, um, even the whole thing about LGBT, you know, social identity, any of those things, by just categorizing people in itself works for it and works against it, mm. right? And that's 
that's how I feel. Because as soon as you kind of, you know, it's like even doing our census. Why are you asking me these questions of whether I'm Chinese, Japanese? Like you don't see Italian, Scandinavian, or any of those ones listed. But you do see Southeast Asian, you do see Chinese, you see Japanese, you see, you know, all these other ones uh, that are very visible minorities. But when you get into the so-called, like what makes us a visible, and you go to China, the white people are the visible minority, right? You know, but it's all about perspective. But, you know, by just categorizing somebody, does that really help? Or does it really highlight the difference? You know, it's something to think about. Because I feel that as soon as you say that person is different because they are X, whatever the X is, you have then made that person's difference a thing. And when it becomes a thing, is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Right? And so, I mean, we can't get away from it. I mean, you know, our brain operates in categorizing. You know, that is a natural way of looking at it. But um, do you really need to see the difference? Like, is, is that something that has to be done in order for us to move beyond seeing differences? Maybe it is, you know, I think it is. I think for sure we do need to acknowledge that there have been certain people in our society that have not been given um, their due or been treated well simply because of the way they looked or acted or behaved. As soon as people say they don't see color, you're saying you do see color. <laughs> you, you see the paradox there? Uh -huh. So, I. You know, I mean, when kids are born and they grow up, you see little kids. When you go out and, in, and if you go into a park or into a classroom or a thing where there's a multitude of kids and they see each other for the first time, other than the initial shyness of I don't know you, it's that's it. They just say, you're a person and I don't know you. Mm -hmm. They don't see you're a black person and I don't know you. They don't see you're a Chinese person and I don't know you. They don't see any of that. They just say, you're just someone. But as soon as moms introduce their two kids to each you know, Joey, this is so-and-so, um, you know, so-and-so, why don't you two go off and play? That whole, okay, mom and the two moms said we could play. Okay, let's go play. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's, it's acceptance. They just are okay with it. And whether we'll ever, as a society, be just okay with the other person being not exactly like me, I don't know. But you know, the diff by seeing the differences, we highlight those differences. And what we do with that highlight then is is really, I think, the key. So you know, where we are in the world right now with what's recently happened with the, you know, the incident with the horrible Aboriginal kids that they, children that they found and, and we're learning about the atrocities that were um, done to these children in, simply in the name of uh, somebody made the decision that these people needed to be assimilated. You know, go, let's go back to what's that start Wars or Black Star, Galat Hill, whatever, one of those sci fi things where the whole idea was you gotta, if you are gonna be accepted, you have to be assimilated. You have to be just like us. You have to do everything and be just like us. And that, you know, when I was growing up, I was trying myself to be assimilated because that was the way the world was. Because I saw people who were not Chinese being able to say or do or, or, you know, I, I felt that they were always better than me, and so I needed to be like them. Yeah. But um, nowadays, it may not be as much of the Chinese or Asian things. There's other cultures that are getting that same reaction. You see some of the people coming from the Middle East, and people look at them, and 
there's a certain aversion to them. Um, the Southeast Asians, there's a certain aversion sometimes just because the way they look, because they haven't been assimilated. So, but is assimilation really what we want, right?